Good morning, dear professors and colleagues. Welcome. Today, I'll be presenting an epidemiology seminar on pharmacoepidemiology. The World Health Organization defines pharmacoepidemiology as a study of the use and effects of drugs in large number of people with the purpose of supporting the rationale and cost-effective use of drugs in the population, thereby improving health outcomes. Well, in simple words, pharmacoepidemiology is the study of interactions between drugs and human population and investigating benefits, risks and the use of drugs in the real world. Also, one may ask, why is pharmacoepidemiology needed? Unfortunately, this is due to the insufficiencies of clinical trials. There are often too few patients in clinical trials. Two, trials are often too simple and usually do not include patients who have multiple comorbid. Third, clinical trials are too brief, only treating patients for a few months. So, this is where pharmacoepidemiology comes in. They are a form of post-marketing surveillance and sometimes called the fourth phase of clinical trials. So, what is post-marketing surveillance? It is systematically asking questions to the public concerning 1. The conditions related to the use or misuse of drugs. 2. The economic of drug use. 3. The long-term effects of drug use. 4. The quality of adverse drug reactions. 5. The quality of drug information provided. And finally, the ability to monitor effects of self-medication. Pharmacoepidemiology applies two common methods. Usually, both methods complement one another to achieve its objective. First, descriptive. Descriptive pharmacoepidemiology deals with observing trends and or outcomes retrospectively, prospectively and transversely. Second, analytical. Analytical pharmacoepidemiology compares associations between determinants and the outcomes of drug use. Pharmacoepidemiology applies these techniques to evaluate 1. The frequency of prescription of the studied drug. 2. The effectiveness of the studied drug. 3. The risks associated to the studied drug. In conclusion, pharmacoepidemiology is vital. It is a form of surveillance that attempts to determine the real-world effects of drugs, how it affects the economy, is the release of drugs timely and relevant? Are the drugs cost-effective in production? Second, how the drugs affects medical practitioners? Are the information provided to medical practitioners adequate? Are the information provided evidence-based? Finally, it attempts to determine how the drugs affects patients. Does the drug improve health? What are the quantity of adverse drug reactions? And how the benefits outweighs the risks? Thank you for taking the time to watch my animated video. Now we can move on to a more serious note. Now that we understand the basis of pharmacoepidemiology, we can discuss. We can see many similarities in other fields of sciences. For example, public health is the science of protecting and improving the health of people. And pharmacoepidemiology is a science that aims to protect the people from potentially harmful effects of previously unrecognized drug effects. Secondly, like epidemiology and medical biostatistics, information is broadly divided into two. For epidemiology, it is descriptive and analytical epidemiology, while for medical biostatistics, it is descriptive and inferential statistics. In pharmacoepidemiology, it is also broadly divided into two categories descriptive and analytical. Thirdly, in the science of environmental health, risk analysis attempts to identify all hazards and problems, conduct exposure assessment, conduct dose response assessment, and integrates this information with the available knowledge of intervention to determine the magnitude of risk it poses to public health. And in pharmacoepidemiology, 
it applies these similar techniques to assess the risk of new drugs that it poses to the people. In summary, it is my opinion that many fields of sciences are interrelated in concept. Due to technical differences in other sciences, concepts are adapted and words are changed for better understanding for the study in its field. For me, as a student of public health, to study these sciences, one must begin with an open mind and must understand the objective and purpose behind each subject. Otherwise, merely memorizing will not allow us to effectively apply this knowledge in practice. Thank you very much for listening.